The Bronx Defenders Organization believes in supporting and defending those in the Bronx community who are in need of criminal and family defense, along with other services. And through their holistic approaches, the Bronx Defenders believes in fighting for justice while overall helping the community. We welcome now the Director of, and com of Community Advisor at the Bronx Defenders, Walter Rodriguez. We welcome him now. Now roll the R for us. Walter Rodriguez. It is, baby. Right. It is. Good to have you. Thank you for having us. So when you talk about the work that you guys are doing, obviously a lot of work needs to occur. There's a lot of people out there in need of mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. And the Bronx Defenders has really stepped up in a lot of major ways in helping people through some real serious, uh, some very serious issues. Sorry. Give us a little bit of history of the Bronx Defenders. So uh, we, are, we started back in 1997 with eight people thinking about a different way of providing public defense. And we have now close to 300 people providing holistic defense, which is basically a model that uh, we promote and say, if we want to address the collateral consequences, all the collateral consequences that a person has, we have to look beyond the criminal cases or the family court cases and look at civil matters, family matters, immigration. You can come into contact with the criminal justice system and your housing could be in jeopardy. Your education, your job could be in jeopardy. So we have holistic defense teams where they're interdisciplinary. We have criminal, family, immigration, civil. We have social workers all come together to create an interdisciplinary team that looks at all the collateral concepts that a person is going to have uh, when they come into contact with the criminal justice system. And kind of like the old days, the phalanx formation of the Greek gods, mm -hmm. uh, we provide uh, a holistic, uh, a wraparound services to address those consequences. In addition, we also provide know your rights trainings to young people on interactions with police in the street. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that students are empowered with the information, knowledge, and skills to navigate police interactions in the street to keep themselves safe. I'm going to walk back to Know Your Rights in a few seconds, but let me get back to the holistic approach that you're talking about. When you walk into a courtroom, many times there's just the judge, the lawyer, the prosecution will say, like, if you're mm -hmm. the defendant, the prosecution's mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. I guess a part of your job is, is, is making people take that extra look in terms of some of the other mitigating circumstances that leads a person there, right. but what makes that different from the normal traditional lawyer? So we have a robust check mix, check system where we look at and we ask different questions about people's cases. So you could come in with a criminal matter, let's say you hop the turnstile, and we're gonna, we're gonna ask you questions like, what is your immigration status? Do you live in public housing? What type of work do you do? By asking those questions, we are getting to what other consequences are gonna come from this criminal matter or, or from a family case court, from, from a family case matter. Mm -hmm. So we look at those issues and then we put uh, additional services. So you could come in for hopping the turnstile, but you also have access to a, a civil attorney, you have access to a, 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 an immigration attorney, a family attorney, they're all, and a social worker, all part of your criminal defense practice under one roof. And now you're also very engaged in the social justice initiative. What work are you doing with the social justice? So, to, to, to deal with some of the issues and problems that come from broken windows policing, such as uh, hopping the turnstile. We are part of a campaign, a fair fares campaign that is actually fighting for reduced fare metro cards for low-income New Yorkers. A lot of our clients, uh, you know, this, the South Bronx is one of the lowest, uh, uh, poorest counties in the nation, and so people cannot afford to go to and from work, a school and we want to make sure that both our clients and New Yorkers have access to a fair fare, to low income uh, fares. One, one thing that we're working on is transparency of property that the NYPD has on their, uh, on their possession. When you get arrested, they, the NYPD takes possession of everything, something like a wallet, your keys, your identification, your phone. And so in many times people are losing property uh, because uh, deadlines have passed or the system is very complicated to navigate. And so we wanna make sure that people who have been exonerated, whose cases have been dismissed, can get their property right away and don't have to lose their property to make sure that we uh, uh, protect people's property rights. And lastly is the Right to Know Act. The Right to Know Act has two bills. One is consent to search, the other one being identification. Mm -hmm. These two bills will actually help uh, increase communication between the NYPD and civilians. One, because uh, as an identification bill, if I'm asking a police officer for their name and badge number, uh, I wanna make sure that that interaction is not uh, a conflict or, or I'm ruffling anybody's feathers the wrong way. Um, and the second one is consent to search. If you don't have 
probable cause or reasonable suspicion to stop me and search me, um, you have to get my permission to, to be able to do that. And so that's what those two bills, which is dubbed as the right to know act, would actually do. Protect New Yorkers and uh, safeguard our rights. And you talk about know your rights because this is what you do and right. part of what you do in terms of knowing your rights. When you, when you roll out know your rights to the community, what's the response that you get? And is it a response that you know people want to really partake in given the heightened times of today? Absolutely. I think that the response we get is like, thank you for coming. We didn't know this was, uh, this was our, these were our rights. We didn't know that this was the protocol that NYPD has to follow. But more importantly, I know what to do now after the interaction with the police officer if I want to uh, exert my rights. I want to, I want to hold uh, NYPD accountable because I had an interaction with the police that was not kosher, uh, that was not uh, a positive one. We want the, our goal is to provide people with the information, knowledge, and skills so they can empower themselves to make the changes that they want in their life, not just in their community, but also uh, in their homes. And, and by providing that information, the Know Your Rights information to students, they are able to navigate those interactions with police and keep themselves safe. All right. Well, if you want more information, of course, you go to www.thebronxdefenders.org, and you can find out more about how you can get in touch and possibly know your rights and know what some of the things that can happen. Thank you very much. Appreciate Walter. it. Thank you. For coming. Walter Rodriguez here with us.